Hey people, how are you all doing? It's Will here back for another fight card prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night um, 68 from the Smoothie Center in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. As uh, Tim Boach and Dan Henderson um, go to battle uh, in the main event. Coming off um, a really good Fight Night card from Brazil at the weekend there. It's great to see Carlos Condit back. Um, just some really good fights throughout the card. It was one of the better Fight Night cards we've had all year. Um, so looking forward to getting onto this one. This um, it's not the greatest card in the world. Um, as always, I'll be watching. There is some fighters I'm really looking forward to seeing. So uh, let's get straight into it. Starting off in the bantamweight division, we've got a uh, Jose Canones against uh, Leonardo Morales. Both guys who were on the Ultimate Fighter um, Tough Latino America. Both guys who lost in the finals. Um, Canones lost to Alejandro Perez and. Leonardo Morales lost to Yair Rodriguez, who's fighting next week in Mexico City against Charles Rosa. Um, close, close fight this, I reckon it's going to be. Morales, they're both, I think both these guys are going to want to stand up and uh, fight there. Both guys um, prefer to strike. They're pretty green when it goes to the bottom. Morales likes to throw a lot of kind of funky stuff, where Canones is your more kind of technical striker, likes to kind of get in the phone booth. Um, and kind of go at it a little bit in there. I say on the show, Morales, he um, knocked out uh, Marcio Fulin, then a, a really dominant performance against uh, Mogli Benitez uh, before losing to Rodriguez in a unanimous decision loss. But he's a guy I actually think has got a lot of ceiling as a fighter and he can improve himself quite a lot. Quinones, I'm not too high on if I'm being fair. He did do all right in the show. He TKO'd uh, Bentley Siler. Which I don't think is saying much because I think the guy's since retired. Um, since he got knocked out in the UFC. Then he beat Mario Beltran and then um, Marco Beltran, sorry, and then lost to Perez pretty convincingly in the final as well. Uh, I think if I have to make a pick here, it would be Leonardo Morales. I think he's got more tools. He's a better athlete than what Teco is. Um, so I'm going to go Chimmy Morales via a decision but I think he could definitely get a knockout as well moving on we've got um, Ricardo Abreu um, against Jake Collier looking forward to seeing Abreu uh, Demenge she was on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil season um, big guy I think three wins by TKO two by submissions looks a guy who kind of stops fights in his first fight in the UFC he um, submitted uh, Vagnau Silva which really isn't saying much because Vagnau Silva is a bum since he was on that show did okay in the show since he's come out of the show he's been terrible he actually lost um, I think it was three weeks ago to a, a guy who was on the show with uh, Boracina he got knocked out in the first round inside two minutes um, Jake Collar he's coming in here he's um, he was actually doing alright in his UFC debut I think he's 9-1 and one. he was against Vitor Miranda and he was controlling the fight with about 15 seconds to go, then Vitor Miranda hit him with a huge big left high kick to the head. Hurt him really bad. Took him down uh, and then just kind of pounded him out down there. So it's interesting to see here. I think this could be a potentially a really good matchup. Um, but I like Dementia and I think he's got every chance of submitting Jake Collier. So I'm going to go a second round submission for Dementia uh, Abreu there. Next up to fight, it's not the greatest fight in the world. Joe Proctor against Justin Edwards. Still kind of surprised Justin Edwards is still in the UFC, to be honest with you. He's lost his last two fights. He lost to uh, Ramsey Najem, where he got, he just kind of, got, he, he didn't do much in that fight. And Najem took him down. They got back up, they put apart a few shots, and then Najem just did the same for pretty much the whole fight. Before that, he lost to Brandon Thatch, which isn't a bad loss, mm -hmm. in all fairness, because Thatch is one of the better ones in the welterweight division. Um, before that, he beat Josh Neal with a pretty beautiful submission or a guillotine choke. But I think this will be the last time we see of um, we see Justin Edwards in the UFC He's against just uh, Joe Proctor here, tough 15 guy, um, ever improving. But he's the fighters that he's fighting now. You're Justin Edwards. It's going to be his ceiling in the UFC. His wins can I say that wins over Justin Salas via TKO, Cristiano Marcelo via decision. Um, he lost to people like Rams in the gym, so I can't see him ever getting above the ceiling that he's at, at the minute. And um, Lost his last fight out against Yancy Medeiros. Um, he got choked out in the first round there. I think this could be a bit of a stinker, but I think that 
Joe Proctor will get the finish later on the fight, so I'm going to go early third round TKO for Joe Proctor. Next up is a fight I'm actually really looking forward to seeing. It's um, Chris Wade against Chris, Christos the, the Spartan Hiagos. Hiagos is coming off a beautiful submission down in Brazil over Jorge Oliveira. Eh, Oliveira, I should say. Eh, before that, he, had a, he lost to Dorinho in his UFC debut, which is always a tough fight to face somebody as good as Dorinho with all the talents that he has. Um, Chris Wade's won his two fights in the UFC. He beat um, Kane Carrizoza, caught him in a guillotine choke, took him out down there, predominantly a wrestler. Second fight, he was against um, Liping Zhang, I think it was, and um, took him down, kind of controlled him down there. Didn't really look for the finish too often. A guy who's you can see he's very physically strong. He's a good grappler. Um, transitions very well when he's on the bottom. He sh I think he should look for more finishes. I think he can. He's a strong, strong enough guy where he can catch submissions and um, maybe get kimuras and arm bars and that. But he doesn't doesn't seem to do it. Improving his feet always, but he's going to look to try and put you against the fence, put you down, and try and look for submissions from there. Hiagos, as I said, is a guy. I'm actually pretty high in this guy. I think he's he's got a big ceiling. He's a young. I think he's only 23 years old. Um, likes to throw. He's a heavy-handed striker. Um, throws flying knees. His fight before he came into the UFC he was a flying knee and punches, which led to that stoppage in the RFA. I think it was RFA 19. Um, I like Hiagos in this fight. I don't think there's going to be a finish. I'm a little bit worried about Hiagos' um, gas tank just a little bit with Wade being the wrestler and he'll try to stifle him and um, wear him out a little bit. But I'm going to go Christos Hiagos here via a very close split decision. Next up with Brian Ebersole against uh, Omari Akhmadov in the UFC welterweight division. Both guys who are kind of predominantly grapplers. Um, Brian Ebersole, I think he's about, he's probably 75th fight, I think, on his record. Um, coming off a win over John Howard where he grappled him pretty convincingly back at UFC 178 last year. He, um, that's all he kind of seems to do. He, he doesn't have much in his feet. He looks to try and grapple get you in the clinch and from the clinch try and take you down there. Has some decent strikes when it gets to the bottom. Um, will look for submissions down there as well. By With his record he's got so many submissions. Um, against Akhmadov here who's coming off a win over Mats Nielsen at UFC 182 earlier on this year which is not really saying much. I really like Mats Nielsen as a person. Um, he actually retired after his fight. It was pretty close. I think it was a split decision if I remember right. Akhmadov, you know, he's one of these Sambo guys coming out of Russia and uh, I saw him live against Gunny Nelson and that was just a total mismatch. Get hit with a right hook and got put to sleep. I think that he fades quite a lot. So I think Brian Ebersole being the veteran that he is, he will know how he can uh, win the rounds out of these um, in this fight. So I'm going to go at a close decision for Brian Ebersole. And uh, the main event fight of the prelim card is Sean Jordan against Derek Lewis. In the heavyweight division now, this isn't good. I don't think this is going to last very long, personally. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people pick Sean Jordan, and I can see why. But I think people are still sleeping on Derek Lewis. I know he lost to Matt Metrione. Matt Metrione is one of the best athletes in this division, and he's going to be one of the guys who's going to. I think he'll he'll get some big name wins before his career's out. He's um, Sean Jordan, as I say. He's not um, his last two opponents out. He knocked out Jack May. I think he hit with a few shots in that Jack May fight, which really stunned him. I think he actually took a knee in that fight as well, which hurt him pretty bad because May is a very long range striker. And in his debut in the UFC, he beat J um, and Jared Kanier in his debut, he beat um, he beat him via TKO in the first round. Kanier didn't do much, got hit with a right hook. Um, I think it was enough, like left hook, right straight, and he went down. Before that, he lost to Mamet Rion and Gabriel Gonzaga. I think that um, he's going to be, I think a lot of people are going to be picking him in this fight, where I'm kind of more on the Derek Lewis side for some reason, I think that he's he's just a big burly guy, I know he's coming off that win over Ruan Potts, which isn't saying much because Ruan Potts is one of probably the worst heavyweight fighter we've maybe ever seen in the UFC, um, beat Guto in a cinch, beat Jack May by knockout, I'm going to go against everybody else here and I'm going to pick Derek Lewis I think, I think Jordan is definitely the safer pick, but I prefer going with Derek Lewis. I think he's just a big, big, strong guy, and he's um, 
I just like him from, in this fight. I don't know why, but I'm going to go with Derek Lewis. Next up, we've got Francisco Rivera against uh, Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. Fun fight. I think this is going to be completely dom um, dominant from Francisco Rivera. He seems like he's in that um, in that little place at the minute where he's looking really good. He would have beat Uriah Faber if that fight had went on last year before he got poked in the eye. Or it could have been this year, in fact. Um, before that, he won... I think he did he not lose a fight. Takiya Misagaki. He's actually on a two-fight skid. Um, I actually thought he won a fight before that. George Rupi beat Edwin Figueroa. But in that fight, maybe maybe not in his, that place at the minute, but in the Uriah Faber fight, he looked like he was coming into being a top-class fighter. And I just think he's got a little bit too much here for Alex um, Caceres here, who's coming off losses himself. He lost to Uriah Faber, lost to um, Kanahara last time out in Japan, got dominated. And but to be honest with you, the fight before that against Sergio Pettis, he was losing that fight before he um, hit Pettis with a shot and got the submission. So I like Rivera here. Do I think he can finish him? Perhaps. I don't think he will, though. So I'm going to go Rivera by decision. Next up, we have Joe Soto against Anthony Burchak, a fight that was supposed to happen at UFC 177 last year in Sacramento before Soto got um, promoted to the main event against TJ Dillashaw when Brow failed to make weight and pulled out. Um, Soto's a former bantamweight um, champion in Tashi Palace and Bellator, and uh, I thought he did fantastic against TJ Dillashaw in all fairness. He, he came in, he showed how tough he is, Hit Dillashaw with a few strikes. He was always outclassed and outmatched against the, the better athlete in TJ Dillashaw, a better wrestler. Better, he was just better everywhere, but he showed heart, he showed grit, determination, and you, you don't teach that in fighters. So, um, see, that's Joe So Anthony Burchuk here is coming off a loss to Ian Entwistle back in Phoenix in, in December. Um, I was thoroughly surprised because um, Ian Entwistle is by far just a one trick pony. He is very very dangerous when it goes there and he grabs your leg and he doesn't let go and they rolled around a few times back in, in the, that fight and Entwistle's just a dog once he gets a, a hold of that leg he does not let go um, when I previewed this fight for UFC 177 I actually picked Anthony Burchak to beat Joe Soto and I think um, this time around I'm going to actually change it I'm going to go with Joe Soto um, but I do think it's going to be really close and I think Soap was going to get the slightest, very slightest of split decision victories over Anthony Burchak. Next up we have Thiago Tavares against Brian Ortega. Um, pretty decent fight. Uh, both guys I think I think they've been on the strand. Um, they've been, they've had wins taken away from them because they've tested positive for um, testosterone I think it is. Um, I know Tavares in the fight against Khabib Nurmagomedov, not that it, it fucking mattered anyway. Um, he was on the juice in that fight. He got TKO'd in the first round. He's came back with a couple of first round submissions. Um, and this is where Thiago Tavares has always been dangerous when it goes to the ground here. But he may have a match here in Brian Ortega who is coming off a win which got turned to a no contest because he got caught for um, performance enhancing drugs. I think that was well over a year ago as well. Um, nearly a year ago, back in July, Mike De La Torre, he caught him in a lovely submission, um, but obviously got taken away there. And this is the guy who predominantly likes to go to the ground. Um, he did that against Keanu Coat back in RFA 12. So, it's a pretty fun fight to watch. And I'll, I've seen a lot of people kind of writing Brian Ortega off in this fight, and I'm not going to be one of those people. I think Ortega has a really good chance of beating Tavares here, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with Underdog. I'm going to go Brian Ortega via, I think he's going to get a decision victory over the veteran uh, Thiago Tavares. Next up, I think the best fight in the entire card, we have uh, Dustin the Diamond Pori against Yancy Medeiros. And I'm going to put this out here first. Yancy Medeiros has been um, tested positive for marijuana. I've got a funny feeling that it might happen after this fight. I've been seeing his Snapchats. And uh, hanging around with the Diaz brothers quite a lot. And uh, if you see the Snapchats, they know they're, they're not really up to any good. Um, but getting on to this fight, we have Dustin Poirier in the lightweight division. Looked absolutely phenomenal against um, Carlos Ferreira up there. I'm all for one of these. I'm one of these people that 
people should fight their natural weight and don't kill himself to make a weight that's going to, in the end, make them kind of... All that losing weight is just not good. And fighting at your natural weight shows... Um, it just It's just a, a whole lot better. It shows that you should have been fighting at this weight all along. So, um, knocked out Diego Ferreira. I think it was the first round in that fight. Coming off that pretty humbling loss to Conor McGregor. He's a guy who's pretty good everywhere, but he loves he loves to, to, to brawl. And he's a, such a fun fighter to watch. He's against Yancy Medeiros here, who's coming off a couple of submission victories over Joe Proctor and uh, Damon Jackson, who... Got subbed again at the weekend by Honey Jason. Before that, he lost by submission to Jim Miller. Um, I just think it's a bad time to run into Dustin Poirier at the minute. And I think this is going to be a scrap. I think this is going to be a fight of the night. I think this will go into the third round. And I like Dustin Poirier to TKO Yancy Medeiros in the third. Very tough fight to choose, though. Because um, I am a fan of both guys. But I'm going to go Poirier. Next up in the co-main event, we have Ben Rothwell against Matt Metrio. Now I don't know if you remember um, Ben Rothwell when he knocked out Alistair Overeem. I think he's got the he had the funniest dance I've ever seen in my life, and I still watch it to this day where he he was dancing after he knocked out Overeem, and it's the funniest shit I think I've ever watched in my life. But um, I don't like this matchup for him at all with Matt Metrio. Um, I'm a Matt Metrio fan. I think he's a really good athlete. I actually think he's probably one of the best athletes in that heavyweight division. Uh, big Ben can hurt you, no doubt about it. He's a huge guy, um, and he's got big power there. He's got a, some grappling skills as well, but Matt Mitrione is so fast. His hand speed is so fast for that division. He, uh, I think he's coming off three wins himself. Sean Jordan would be one of them. Jack May would be another. Uh, probably Derek Lewis would be the other one in there as well. So Gabriel Gonzaga, sorry. I'm thinking um, not Jack May, Gabriel Gonzaga uh, and Olvia first round TKOs, I don't think this is going to finish in the first round, I'm going to go second round for a change, but I do think Matt Metrion is going to knock out Ben Rothwell um, and do it pretty disgustingly as he usually does uh, does as well, so Matt Metrion by TKO for me and in the main event I can't believe this is an abs- uh, a main event I know it was supposed to be DC against Bader but this is a horrible fight I don't think, I don't know how anybody can actually pick Dan Henderson. I would love to pick Dan Henderson, but he's 44 years old. His chin is deteriorating. He's getting knocked out by people like Gegard Musasi, who is not known for knocking out people. Um, knocked out in Sweden. I just I cannot pick against um, Tim Boach here. Boach himself is coming off a loss to um, Talis Leites, where he got submitted in the second round. I think actually think he hurt Leites early in that second round. Leites pulled his shit together um, and really did get a nice finish. And we're going to see him actually in my home card after I come back from UFC 189. Come back to Glasgow and hopefully we're going to see him smash Michael Bisping. That would be quite fun as well. So um, let's see. Dan Henderson faced DC, got thrown uh, ragdolled in that fight, got thrown in his arse, um, faced Gegard Musasi. Got knocked out with, a, I think it was a straight right down the pipe. Wasn't even that big a shot. And he, he was out from there. Um, before that, he, he did TKO um, Shogun. But he was getting his arse handed to him in that fight as well. And before that, split decision loss to Shad Evans. And then that devastating knockout at the hand of uh, Vitor Belfort. I can just see... He never uses his wrestling, Dan Henderson. Very rarely does he do it, so I don't see him doing it in this fight. I think he's going to want to try and push Boach against the cage and try and load shots from there. I don't think he's going to be able to do it, I think. But he has a, he had, he does have a chance to win. There's no doubt about that Dan, Dan Henderson has a chance to win. He's got that big right hand, um, the big H-bomb. And once he lands that, if he hits you once, you're, you're out. I just don't think he's going to do it this one. I'm going to go with... I think the smart pick is definitely... Tim Boach, so I'm going to go Tim Boach by um, a TKO in the third round, I think, once Henderson kind of slows himself down, so my pick, that's my picks for UFC Fight Night 68 from New Orleans I think I'll, I will be back in fact I might actually film the video for UFC 188 straight after this one come follow me on Twitter Big Bulbas, uh, I keep saying that, sorry Will Martin 7MMA 
uh, if you play counter move if you like to join my game let me know and i will let you in come subscribe um, to my channel let's talk some mma i'd like to thank the the new i think it was five to ten subscribers i got for the last video i appreciate that very much we talked a little mma um, which was great so uh, i'll be back for ufc 188 uh, but keep an eye because it might be a similar time to this video here so uh, take care